Hey, like and subscribe, Mongoose Max Channel Hawaii here. We're gonna talk about interesting things like the planet Nubiru, planet X, what is it? Who is coming? What the heck is going on? Well, we got something. Introduce yourself. Modern day shaman, you can call me Nate. All right, Keith is up next. He's been a Toastmaster for a long time. Exactly how long? A long time. He tries to use it sometimes on his YouTube channel, Mongoose Max Hawaii. Like and subscribe. I like how you always get that in there. <laughs> Smash that like button. Smash it. He sometimes does paranormal investigations. So today, Keith invites us to look at ghost theory. Why do people even believe in ghosts? His speech is, you change the time, right? What is yeah, it now? 10 to 12. 10 to 12. Please welcome Keith Kirstein with Ghost Theory. Clap, 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 clap. There we go, there we go, there we go. Yes, and oh, I almost forgot my toys. <laughs> yes, pray for the dead, and the dead will pray for you. Better than being preyed on by the dead, maybe. <laughs> well, why do we even believe in ghosts? Look, this is, the, this is what I'm going to be trying to um, explore with you today, is uh, ghost theory. But first, let me tell you about ghost theory. Elliot and Joe... Two English blokes are walking through an old house. It's abandoned for sure. And they're in England, so it's somewhere in the obscure Suffolk or uh, some place, and who knows where it is, but they know it's abandoned and there's but there's things still in the house. There's like the guy's stuff, he's not been gone very long. There's things on the side of the bed and there's stuff in the kitchen, and it's like, oh, it's creepy. And Joe goes. Introduce yourself to their audience because they're YouTubers. They are calling themselves Ghost Theory, which is why I'm telling you this because I have to give credit to Ghost Theory because I'm going to be talking about <coughs> Ghost Theory. <coughs> and so Elliot goes, Well, I'm Elliot. He goes to Joe and like, Oh, I'm not Elliot. And go, oh, look at this hole in the floor. It has some stairs in it. It's all creaky, crappily wood. And you go down there, there's cobwebs and spiders. And, and you go first. You know what? I'll go first. He goes, yeah, that's good. You go first, because if you die, then I know it's not safe. <laughs> For sure. This is the kind of banter that these two guys are doing. So they're very, very entertaining. But there's something interesting about the way they paranormal investigate which is much more honest. See, most of the paranormal investigation is a lot of bovine diaper filler. <laughs> <laughs> One person called it. And so what we have with uh, John Elliott of Ghost Theory, and I highly recommend if you're interested, check them out. They're fun to watch and they honest investigation. They actually sit there going, they're debunking themselves as they go. It's like, Oh, did someone have some Did that one was in a code? They're not doing what other ghost channels do. It's like, oh! Or the, or the box says, is Fred there? Oh, there's a Fred here. And they build up a story on some random thing. But what we're going to look at about ghost theory, not the YouTubers, but the theory is 
is why do we even believe in ghosts? Why? Now, I have this book, it's Hal Holzer. I didn't bring it because it's like this thick and it's big, it just says ghosts. Bunch of stories. Uh, he, Hal Holzer was a very intense investigator. He was really out there with his recorder, investigating places and wrote this book. But this preface of this book, he says that the theory is that the ghost, it happens in your mind. When you see a ghost, it's, you're seeing it in your mind. So the ghost is allowing you to see it in your mind. Like it's not really there, it's in your mind. So it's kind of a very confusing thing about this. I'm like, well, I guess that's the psychology of parapsychology. It's all in your mind. And then it kind of was ah, because there are some incidences where people claim to things happen and stuff gets thrown and and all, all sorts of things. So there's got to be more to this theory. Why do people believe in ghosts? Well, it explains the great unknown because what we know about death, you know, people don't come back. And this, except for the guy in the New Testament. <laughs> but people don't come back from the dead. Who's born, new traveler doth return, says Shakespeare. Uh, so it's an unknown. What we know about death is, well, we know death is uncertain. And we know that death is certain. <laughs> it's one of those things, right? So it's the door. What's on the other side? Is there an afterlife? Thereby ghosts, right? If you have ghosts, then you have an afterlife, then there's brown or something. So if you get some, so it's one of those things in anthropology, they'll describe religion as something maybe constructed that explains things to us. It explains the unknown, gives us a peace of mind because there's an explanation that's what religion does. It's like, gee, anthropology, uh, it's given that gusto to the atheism angle. Because then it's like, is there something after? Is there that? Now, if you just go to Catholicism and their little book of uh, catechism, which is what they believe is really happening and what they teach, that's the catechism book. So anything they don't teach is heresy. That means we don't teach that. But this is what they teach. And if you have the Catholic uh, uh, like catechism stuff, they're like, yeah, of course God exists. Of course the devil exists, of course heaven exists, hell exists, and purgatory exists. And maybe people don't like purgatory, the idea of, well, people don't like heaven and hell. But purgatory, where people who are going to go to heaven have to get purged a little bit in some fire, like uncomfortable things. But then there's this other aspect, which is kind of, well, I'll call it, eternity. So what we're going to do is do a small little mathematics refresher. Math, math, anybody? Anybody with the math? Check this one out. And, and I got this from this article, which I didn't bring because, you know, it's chaos. Uh, now, infinity. Everybody knows infinity. Okay. It's forever stuff. Go on forever. Now, numbers are very easy to, you know, describe infinity. Uh, how many numbers are there? <laughs> well, you, you can keep counting, so there's infinite number of numbers, right? And remember from, like, those classes, there's rational and irrational numbers. Ir refresher, irrational, uh, whatever. But rational numbers, yeah. Rational numbers, are you can describe them with a fraction. So one-third rational, three-fourths rational, one and one-third rational numbers. Right? Okay. Then there's integers, or whole numbers, like one, two, three, four. So how, which, what, which set of numbers is bigger? Integers or rational numbers? Well, between one and two, there's a bunch of fractions. Two, one, two, three, four. So there's more rational numbers, right? Then, any nods, yeah? 
more rational numbers than there are whole numbers. There's one, two, three, four, and then there's a bunch of fractions in between, so that makes four. Now, if you have an infinite number of whole numbers, and you have an infinite number of rational numbers, the set of infinity of is bigger than that infinity. So we have different bignesses of infinity. That infinity is bigger than that infinity. And if you go to how many numbers are between one and two with that sort of thing, you can take a number, cut it in half, maybe divide it in half, 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 to infinity. So you can go down to infinitesimal infinity. You have one infinity which is bigger than the other infinity. Okay, math, let's step back. What if you apply this to space? Easy, right? Space, universe, maybe Doctor Strange in the multiverse because we have bigger universes than other. <laughs> what about time? Time. So now, when you have this, does time go like that too? Infinitely all these? So you got this eternity. Now, this is very uncomfortable unless you have an explanation. What's behind death's door? Eternity. I give up, I'm scared, I don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> but, we place, we have a need to fill the gap so we're okay and go to sleep and the house is just creaking, whatever. Now there's a little story about this guy, um, uh, Padre Pio, uh, and about ghosts. Because why do ghosts exist? We think this, they have unfinished business, so the ghost gotta be up there. There's someone with, oh, horrible, violent, quick death, or they don't know that they're dead. I mean, no, how can you not know that you're dead? I mean, you're just like, I mean, maybe it takes a little bit to figure it out, but I think you'd figure it out. If you're a ghost, you're, you'd figure it out. But Padre Pio is an interesting one, his story, because there's a purgatory, getting back to that bit. Now, in purgatory, you, you, everybody dies and goes to, this is the Catholic thing, everybody dies and goes to purgatory. Now, if you don't go to purgatory, go to hell's a one-way ticket, goodbye. <laughs> There's no retrieval. But purgatory is okay because you know eventually you're going to get to heaven. So you just got to like purify a little bit because heaven's so pure, <laughs> you got to unpure, you know, the little kind of whatever. So praying for the dead in purgatory, and they can be helpful actually to you, is the idea. Well, Father Padre Pio, that guy that's a saint, very whole story unto himself if you know about this guy. But uh, he was sitting there and his friend and all that in the monastery and they saw this guy in front of the fireplace and he was just all, Ooh, and he's like, oh, what's wrong with you? You know, what's, how, what's, what's the matter there? And he's like, I used to be a priest here and all that, and all this, and mm, just say a, a novena, whatever, mass for me. And, and okay, man, well, don't worry about it, you know? Yeah, we'll say a little mass for you, you know? You're okay. And they never saw this guy. Uh, he told them that uh, he used to live here in this apartment, in the in the in the in the, the the monk thing that he lived in. And they left. He left, and then he was like gone. And it was like what? And they said, "Well, Father Padre Pio was like saying, well, who was this? And it was this guy, and lived in that place.' And he's like, no, that guy died a long time ago in a fire.'" What he saw was his ghost. It was like, he saw the guy's ghost. And he's like, well, he wanted a prayer to be said for him. Because things were happening like rattling around and now they're not rattling around. And because he was in purgatory, he came to visit to say, pray for me. So I, and I can get out of this purgatory thing because it's not a very comfortable place. And so they said a little prayer for him with a mass in purgatory, and it was like everything was fine. And so the point being about this little weird story is that that's an explanation of why some ghosts exist. Unfinished business. Maybe we're, I don't know, maybe it exists, maybe it don't. But <laughs> there's always that I can't rationalize it. 
and set it down, it's so ambiguous that I have to put something there. So this was just a little exercise in looking into what's the theory, what's, why do we have a, a lot of people have, are compelled to look into it and see if is something there. And if there is, what's our explanation of why? Well, pleasant dreams. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>